there's no experience like actually getting out on the bay and seeing the trash out here, getting our hands into it, pulling it on board and really figuring out where this stuff is coming from simply by the types of trash we're looking at. Nice. Oh, the, straw, the, straw. the ubiquitous plastic straw. The ubiquitous plastic. <laughs> oh no. These things, Let's pick that up. along with bottle caps, are commonly found in islands that are in areas so far out to sea that you would never even fathom these things would show up there. But because of the major oceanic currents, it takes years, but they do end up there, particularly in areas near Hawaii, like Sand Island, uh, Midway Atoll, where the Les Sen Albatross nests. And they have 90% of their bellies, actually, of albatross chicks' bellies, have plastic inside them. And it's mainly this stuff. It's the single-use plastic that they're ingesting by accident. They think it's food. They don't know any better. So they swallow it whole, and they take it to their chicks and feed their chicks the food. And ultimately, they end up starving to death. What really doesn't make sense is just the basic concept of using an item that is indestructible, that's going to be around forever, use it once, then throw it away. It's not just the straw that's in the water, but it's all the contaminants and organic contaminants that can stick to the straw. You can find the PCBs, which are organic contaminants. Actually, anything that's organic in nature will stick to this because this is carbon-based. So any chemical that's carbon-based will also stick to this. I didn't fall in. Along the foam lines we see is where the two tides are mixing with each other. That's sort of forcing the water to come up. And as the water comes up, it's a place where all the phytoplankton are there, and it's also a place where all the garbage accumulates. So it's sort of you have two forces of water coming together and pushing up, and that's where the that's why we find the garbage along the same line where we see the foam. Is it okay if the photos are coming out with some light and some dark on them? That's is that okay. going to be readable? Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah it's, we're, what we're trying to we do the is getting the grid okay. so that we understand the size of all of these items. So after we take the picture of the trash, uh, we have this camera, which is synced up to a GPS. Um, from there, we bring it into a RoboGeo program. So we have all the trash with the images linked up to a GPS position of where we found it, so we can have accurate data. And then we also categorize it. So let's say it was cigarette butt, um, you know, rubber ball, uh, something of that sort. So we could actually kind of figure out what's floating around and where it's going. Um, and then after that, we turn that data into maps um, with different trash types indicated in different colors, um, with different blobs with how much we found in a certain geographical area. Yeah, got a green cap over there, yep. Probably the best thing we ever found was a full sleeping bag, almost brand oh. new, um, that we were able to give to a homeless man after we tried it out. <laughs> so it's kind of a nice way to reuse it. Here, the power of one is truly the power of the conservation movement. It's that there's a lot of stuff that we don't need. Each of us has not just a duty, but the opportunity to make personal changes that are really going to positively impact our oceans out here.